Hey there YouTube, today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way that you can configure GitHub Actions to automatically deploy out code from a GitHub repository directly into AWS S3 and CloudFront. This is going to be a continuation of a video I did previously where we manually deployed out a view app into S3 and CloudFront. Uh, check one of the corners for a link to that video. And if you like this kind of content, feel free to uh, give me a subscribe, like button, notification, you know, that whole YouTuber thing. All right, let's get started. Okay, so as a quick recap of what we covered last time, um, we set up an S3 bucket, we built our Vue.js application and uploaded all of the artifacts into the root of the bucket. And we also enabled static website hosting. If I head over to properties and scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you can see there's this URL we have here where if I click on it, it opens up our Vue.js app. Now, if I go to CloudFront, which is the CDN product or CDN service from AWS, we've also created a CloudFront distribution, which will distribute our app to uh, different edge nodes all over the world. We got our own unique domain name here, which is a CloudFront.net domain. And if I paste this into the browser, you can see we're presented with what is essentially the same app, but being served up through the CDN as opposed to directly from the S3 bucket. Okay, so before we hop over to GitHub and start writing our action, we need to create a service account that's going to allow GitHub Actions to publish our updated changes into AWS. So in the search box on the top of the AWS console, type in IAM, which stands for Identity and Access Management. This is where you'd come if you want to manage any kind of users or policies for your AWS environment. So I'm going to head over to Users on the left-hand side, and I'm going to click Add User. And you can name your user whatever you want. I'm going to name mine uh, GitHub Deploy. Pretty straightforward and simple. Um, there are two different ways that users can access AWS. There's either programmatically using the CLI or SDKs, or there is the AWS Management Console access, which provides them a password to be able to log into the web interface. Now, since this user, this specific user account is only going to be publishing code up using the AWS SDKs and CLI, let's go ahead and select programmatic access and leave AWS Management Console access disabled. Click next to go to the permissions. Now, ideally, to make this account the most secure, what you'd want to do is create a custom policy that provides access only to the necessary resources for deploying your code. However, for the sake of this example, I'm just going to select administrator access, which essentially gives this user account access to my entire AWS tenant. And let's go ahead and click next to go to tags. We don't need to add tags. We can click next again and finally create user. Now, when you present it with this page, you'll be given an access key ID and a secret access key because we selected programmatic access. I'm going to open up Notepad on my computer, but you can open up whatever text editor you want. We're going to have to note these changes down. So I click this little icon here to copy the access key ID. I'll paste that in there. And then let's go ahead and show the secret access key. And I'm going to right click and copy here. Now, one thing worth noting is you never want to share these credentials out with anybody since they basically allow any user who has these credentials access to your AWS environment. Go ahead and paste that in Notepad, and we're going to save this for later when we set up our GitHub secrets. Now let's head over to GitHub. I have this repository that was created in the last video. I'm going to go ahead and select the Actions tab here. Now if you scroll down this page, you'll see there's a number of predefined actions that have been provided by either GitHub or the community in general to allow simple deployment out to various popular services. However, we're going to select the simple workflow, which is basically going to let us build our own. So go ahead and click Set Up This Workflow. And now you'll be brought to a page that has this, this YAML editor. A GitHub action is just a YAML file that kind of instructs GitHub on individual steps to do to build and deploy your code. I'm going to change the name of the YAML file to deploy to AWS, just so it's a little clear. And we're going to touch on each one of these different sections that have been predefined for us. So the name is the actual name of the action that will show in the Actions tab when it's being executed. So we're going to rename this to deploy to AWS. This section that starts with on, it basically controls when the action will run. Uh, there are various triggers and ways that you can automate deploying out your code or executing the specific action. You can see by default in this template, we have um, any pushes to the main branch or any pull requests that are committed to the main branch uh, will trigger this action. But there's also this workflow underscore dispatch. And what this does is it gives you a button inside of the actions tab so you can run this workflow manually. Now, the job section is kind of what instructs the workflow, what specific steps are required in order to deploy your code. And what's neat is you can actually create multiple jobs. So if you wanted if you wanted to break this out into specific chunks of steps, uh, that's certainly one way to do it. However, 
in this example, we're just going to keep everything inside of this one job. But instead of naming it build, I'm going to name this, I'm going to rename this to deploy just to make it a little uh, more clear on what our job is doing. Now, inside of our deploy job, we have this runs on line here, and this defines the type of container that this these actions will be executed inside. And since we're using view with node, Ubuntu latest is perfectly fine. Steps are individual steps that will execute as a part of the job. So when a job triggers, what it's going to do is it's going to execute this step here using the actions slash checkout action. And then we also have an example here where we can run a, a single line script or a multi line script. You also notice on the right hand side under marketplace, you can search for different types of actions to be able to play be placed inside of your steps. So with that said, I'm going to delete these last two steps we have here since we're not going to need them. We're going to build our own just to touch real quick again on what the checkout action does is this is what triggers GitHub to pull a copy of your code down into the container or task runner uh, where it's going to be executed. So we're going to go ahead and leave this as is. And we'll go ahead and add two new lines there. So now the, the next action we actually need to put in here is this setup Node.js environment. You can see on the right hand side, since we basically need to make sure Node is installed and configured on the task runner. Let's go ahead and press this play button here. Once you click that play button, you can scroll down. You can see all the specific options that this particular action supports. Now, instead of just copying and pasting this entire line of code, let's go ahead and write it manually since most of the parameters they have set are not going to be used. So I'm going to add a hyphen there to designate that this is going to be an, a a completely separate step from the action slash checkout step. And we're going to type a name to give this action a name. So it's displayed in the console when we're running it. I'm going to name this setup node.js environment. And then underneath that, we don't need another hyphen there. Just tab over to be in the same column as name. We'll type uses to specify the type of action we want to use here. Actions forward slash setup hyphen node. And in my testing, the version of this action that I used was 2.1.2. So we're going to go ahead and just specify that version there. Let's go ahead and create another step. Hyphen name. This one's going to be npm install and npm build. And this is going to be a multi-line script. So we're going to type run. And then we have to put a colon and a pipe, which is the space, which is likely the character right beneath your backspace key. Let's go ahead and tab over. And let's type our commands that bash is going to run when uh, executing this step. So we're going to type in npm install to install all of our dependencies and then npm run build since that is the default build script defined inside of a view project. So the next step we're going to define here is actually an action that was provided by a community member. So the name of this particular step, we're going to call s3 sync. Tab over so we're on the same line uh, uses is actually going to be Jake Jarvis forward slash s3 hyphen sync hyphen action. And the version of this one is v0.5.1. Now width is going to allow us to provide some additional parameters into this action. And args is what we want to specify here. Um, in the back end, I imagine that this action is using the AWS uh, CLI tool to sync up our code into GitHub. So we can pass in some para additional parameters into that CLI using this args parameter. So I'm going to add double hyphen ACL and then space public hyphen read, which is going to set all the files that we upload into AWS to be publicly readable. And since this is a website, that's exactly what we want. And then I'm going to add another parameter here of double hyphen delete, which is going to clear out our bucket or any associated files before it syncs this up, which is what we want to make sure that there are no um, old pieces of the website or web app still remaining inside of S3. So I'm going to add a new line in the backspace to be on the same column as width. And then we're going to set some environment variables here. So env colon new line and tab over. And then we're going to type in AWS underscore S3 underscore bucket. And then instead of typing in our bucket name here, which we will need to grab in a, in a few moments, I'm going to put a dollar sign and double open curly brackets. And we're going to use type in secrets dot AWS underscore S3 bucket. Now, the way that this works is once we're done building out our action here, our workflow, we're going to head over into the repository settings and add a couple of GitHub secrets. Since this file is actually going to be committed with our repository, we don't want to add these credentials directly inside of the repository. It's best practice to, to keep them out of the repository and be handled by some kind of secrets manager, which GitHub provides for us for free. So we're going to add another environment variable, AWS underscore access key ID. And we're going to do the same thing. Secrets, save myself from 
that fingering this, we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this over here. Close our curly brackets. Next one is AWS underscore secret underscore access key. And same thing, dollar sign, double open curlies. Secrets dot. And we'll copy and paste this over here. Now we do AWS region is the next one. This isn't necessarily a secret, so I don't mind keeping this along with the repository. I'm just going to enter US East 1. And the way that I know where our region is defined is if I head it back into AWS. Let's go ahead and hit S3 one more time. Once this loads up, you can see the, the region for this bucket is US East 1. So you can generally, whatever region that you're in, you just type in this text um, inside of that environment variable. And the last environment variable we need to sync up our code into S3 is source underscore DIR for source directory. And that's going to be DIST because that's where the view CLI will build our artifacts into. Okay, now there's one final step we need to do. Since we have our code deployed out to CloudFront, which is AWS's content delivery network, um, we need to do what's called invalidate the CloudFront cache. Um, by default, uh, files within the cache will expire every few hours, but we want to force this since we're deploying out a brand new version of our website. So we'll type a name and we'll say invalidate CloudFront. Uh, use is going to be C-H-E-T-A-N forward slash invalidate hyphen CloudFront hyphen action. And the version of this we're using is V1.3. And now we need to set a couple environment variables here. Uh, we're going to set distribution, which is going to be the distribution ID of our CloudFront distribution. And we're going to grab that from the console in a second. Uh, dollar sign double open curlies. Secrets.distribution. It's worth noting that the name of these particular environment variables to the name of the secrets, they don't have to match specifically, but it's it's a good practice to keep them synced up so you can quickly reference which of these secrets are being used by your different workflows. Uh, we need to type in paths as our next environment variable, which is going to dictate which of files that we want to remove out of the cache. And since we're basically redeploying out our entire website, we can use forward slash and a star to clear all files out from the cache. And instead of typing the next three that we need, they're actually the same as these guys above here, the AWS region access key and secret access key. So I'm just going to paste these guys in here. And there we go. This kind of concludes us writing our custom GitHub workflow here. So once we're done on the upper right hand corner, let's go ahead and click start commit, which is basically going to create a file and commit it into the repository. You can specify a custom commit message if you really want to, but I'll leave this as create deployed aws.yaml. We're going to commit directly to the main branch as opposed to cr creating a pull request and go ahead and click commit new file. Okay, now if we head back up into the root of our repository, we can see we have this new folder here, uh, .github forward slash workflows, and inside of there, here's our actual file that we just defined here. If you head over to the actions tab, you'll see that it's actually trying to execute this action because of our trigger that we have defined on committing into the main branch. Uh, however, this is going to fail simply because we haven't added our secrets in as we need to. So let's head over to settings. Scroll down to the bottom on the left hand side. The second one from the bottom is secrets. Let's go ahead and select that. And you see we have no secrets uh, defined for this repository. So we're going to go ahead and click new repository secret. And what I'm actually going to do for the sake of saving myself, um, again, mistyping these, I'm going to open up this YAML file and we're going to copy and paste these over. So the four that we need are the AWS S3 bucket, the access key ID, secret access key, and then the distribution. So since we already have the access key ID and secret access key, let's go ahead and type those guys in first. So access key ID is this first one that we pulled out from the AWS console. Click add secret. Now let's create one for our secret access key. Go ahead and paste in that value. Let's create a new one for our AWS S3 bucket. And the place you're going to find this specific value is inside of S3. Just copy the name of the bucket here. In my case, it's bmorrison view app 123 Paste that value in. And the last thing we need to do is grab that distribution. Let's go ahead and create that secret first before we head back into AWS. New repository secret. And then the, where you would get the distribution ID is if you head over to CloudFront. There's this ID. My, in my case, it starts with EJG. Let's go ahead and copy that text. 
and paste this into our value field here and add secret. Okay, and that should pretty much conclude adding our secrets into GitHub. Let's go ahead and go into actions and see if this guy's failed already. Looks like it has. So now if I select deploy to AWS from the left hand side, you can see now I'm presented with the button run workflow. And this is where that workflow dispatch trigger uh, comes into place. So let's go ahead and select this and click run workflow. Now, if we wait a few moments, it should show up in the list. Let's go ahead and click on it. And you can actually watch the deploy happen in real time. Um, in this screen, this is kind of an overview of all the jobs that you have uh, defined. But if you click on our deploy job that we've defined inside of our workflow, you can actually watch the individual steps as they process through. And our job seems to have completed successfully. So now even though we've deployed out to AWS, we haven't actually deployed any changes. So accessing, for instance, the CloudFront version of our app is not really going to look any different. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to head into VS Code that I have open. I'm going to sync down the changed version of the code. You can see we have our deploy to AWS YAML file that we just created here. So now let's simply change the text that's being presented right here where it says, welcome to your Vue.js app and try and deploy this out one more time. If I head into app.view, you can see we have the default hello world component that's provided for us by default with Vue CLI. Let's go ahead and change this to GitHub actions are awesome. Save this. Set over to source control, and we're going to commit this file. I'll just say updated app.view. I'm going to control enter to commit my files and click the sync button again to sync my changes up into GitHub. Now, if we head back into GitHub, I'm going to pop back up into the actions tab. You can see here we already have the action being run by GitHub, even though we didn't have to come in here and do it manually, simply because it was triggered off of our commit into the main branch. So let's go ahead and wait here for a few moments and let this deploy finish. Okay, now that our workflow has been completed, let's go ahead back into the CloudFront version of our application. Let's refresh the page. And you can see without having to actually go into AWS and do anything, we've already deployed out a completely updated version of our code. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share it out to your friends. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. If you're looking for help on an issue or just want to collaborate with other developers, be sure to join my Discord by clicking the fullstack.chat link in the description below or just enter it into your browser to join. Thank you so much and have a great day.